Hi guys and welcome to Wargame Red Dragon tutorial with me Bubble Box and today we're looking at the naval decks and we're looking at the aircraft, the choppers and the art ground based artillery anti-ship warfare missile weapons and we'll have a quick chat at the end about some of the other units that you can bring in looking at the blue four side today. The blue four planes are probably a bit better than the red four planes although the red four navy is better than the blue four navy so it sort of balances each other out in that way first one we've got is this tram intruder it's sort of a squat looking sort of i don't know looks a bit like a duckling if does it uh, maybe it doesn't but yeah it looks a bit sort of short and squatty it's got nice missiles though 5600 meter range accuracy and stabilizer not bad and a nice decent or well, average kind of ap power for these things of 80 four of them now when i bring in asw planes generally i'll go for maybe two missiles rather than the four ones the reason or my reasoning in my head is that if you've got four they're going to have to get a little bit closer to the enemy before they get their four off and they're more likely to get shot down and be able to come back for another salvo another day it does depend on the type of ship you're attacking of course some of the ships have got better range of anti-air units than others so I guess these would be useful against some types of trips, but when you're going against things like Sovereign Menes, it's a little bit risky maybe going with a tram intruder. The other thing about the intruder is it's 140 points, which isn't too much for an anti-ship warfare plane with four really nice missiles, but it hasn't got any other weapons, so it can't really defend itself if it's attacked, for example, by... I don't know, by sort of some sort of medium air-to-air -air fighter. It hasn't got its own sort of um, anti-air missiles that it can defend itself with. So you've got to watch out for and try to have air superiority when you're using these things. But next we've got the CF-18ASUW. Uh, recently I've been putting these in my deck um, alongside another plane, which we'll talk about shortly. It's a nice looking plane. It's fast. The Truder quickly, but had before is 750 kilometers per hour. It does have an ECM of 30. The ASUW is a thousand K, so it's nice and fast. Gets in and out really fast, and get ready for a next for its next flight. Um, it's got an ECM of 40 percent. This one it is 160 points, which is a bit more than the previous model. But and it's only got two missiles, same range and same sort of accuracy stabilizer and AP power. But it can defend itself a bit. It's got these AIM-9M missiles with a decent accuracy and stabilizer. So if it is attacked, it can sort of shoot back at least. And it's got a Vulcan gun. It can also attack helicopters over the sea as well with its Vulcan gun and its AIM-9M missile. So a nice kind of all-round anti-ship warfare plane that's fast. It's got ECM, two missiles, decent range. So should be able to get in and out uh, and back to base. A nice one. And then we've got the Starfighter and we go from nice to pretty abysmal. I don't see people using these very often. They've got two missiles, but the range is really letting them down at 4,200. These have only got a really niche use against ships which have got very poor, like lone, lone ships that have got quite poor um, anti-air, really. Um, and you have to say, like a lot of the naval deck weapons why bring these in when you could bring in you know an, a cf-18 or something even better so yeah um they've got the same sort of range actually stabilize it it's just the range really is the only thing that lets you down um the thing that's good for them is they are cheap so if you want a cheap one and you want to pick off sort of lone wolves then maybe you could go for this one um the speed isn't brilliant it's got no ecm either so it's going to get shot down by a, a missile if it hits then we've got the t tornado FMG. Now this is a much better plane. It looks really nice. Well, it's a tornado. All the tornadoes look good. This looks like it's a West German model. 180 points, so it's quite expensive. Uh, more, even more expensive than CF-18. This time we've got four missiles again. The range again lets it down maybe just a little bit. I really like my ASW missiles to be over 5,000 meters. This is 4,900, but the Axiom stabilizer on this thing is huge at 75 percent and it's got the ap power of 80 again can defend itself it's got the aim 9 now missiles can shoot choppers because it's got this mauser bk27 as well strength of 10 ecm really good 40 percent and a thousand k's nice and fast again turn ready is not brilliant but nice and fast ecm for two nice anti-ship missiles just let down a little bit perhaps by the range but yeah Next, we've got the F-16A Block 15. Now, this um, 
sort of a medium sort of price one at 110 points bit of an all-rounder again the range just letting this one down a little bit the Axiom stabilizer isn't quite up to par nor is the AP power on this missile um, it can it's, again it's uh, a medium sort of range fighter aircraft as well so it can double up on its what it can do and it's got the Vulcan can shoot at helicopters thousand kilometers per hour ECM really good again Again, just the just the uh, range letting it down on this one a little bit, but cheaper. Then we've got the Super Hornet. Now this is the one everyone has in their deck, pretty much. All the decent players tend to have this in their Blue Four decks if they want an ASW aircraft, and I'd put these in. Sometimes I'll put, I'll put these in and these CF-18s. Two missiles, nice range, good axis stabilizer, okay AP power pretty decent and it's got these aim 128 amram missiles with a massive range of 7000 good axis stabilizer so it's a nice air superiority for fighter you could have it flying around a little bit in the background and if you see a ship you can also attack the ship as well and uh, can sort of attack choppers but only sort of to a limited degree um, it's also got a fantastic ECM 50% and the speed is really good as well so this is probably i would say the best anti-ship warfare plane in the game might be sticking my head out of the water there a bit but i think it is let me know if you think otherwise and you think there's something better but i think this is this got to be the guy it's quite expensive but it's a good all-rounder and it's got some fantastic missiles there with a nice range then you've got the f11g now this is good as well i mean look look at this thing this looks fantastic it's a four rocket one it's a pure asw plane 150 points 5,600 meters it's got the four missiles but it I sometimes I think you should just bring this in because it looks so good really um, the rest of the stats are similar to the others but yeah so it's a bit like the uh, intruder but better I suppose if you compare it to the intruder uh, the tram intruder there it is it's sort of in fact are they this let's have a look what's it got better ECM there speed basically the speeds a lot faster the ECM slightly down in fact and the turn radius is actually slightly worse so if you compare these two they're not very far apart to be honest so yeah the f11g and the tram intruder you take your choice then we've got the super attendard this has got a beautiful missile the exocet am39 missile huge range look at that 6125 it's only got one missile but it's got a really nice action stabilizer the ap power is only 60 really what can use this perhaps picking off single ships maybe i don't know it, the problem with this is the one missile it's unlikely to get shot down it's got a decent ecm speed's not massively fast either but it's probably can get it in and out a few times during the game um it's only 80 points as well so but again would you get this over and above another weapon if it had two of these exocet missiles it would be unbelievably good but it's got one and it's hooked under one ring as well. I mean, why can't they just hook another one up on the other wing? And then you'd have an awesome aeroplane there. But hey, what can you do? Then we've got the Tornado GR1B. Looks good as well. It's a Tornado. And it's got two nice anti-ship warfare missiles with a decent range. It's also an anti-air fighter and can shoot at choppers similar to some of the other planes we've already had a look at turn radius is 400 thousand k's and a decent ecm nice again a nice all-round anti-ship warfare plane there another one so you could bring a lot of these there's sort of four that are decent you could bring them all into your deck and just have a massive anti-ship warfare marine deck anyway let's move on and have a look at the anti-air at these helicopters next anti-ship helicopters and we start off with the super puma this is the people's favorite i think this is the one i generally bring in if i want to bring a chopper in mainly for the range range is 4900 really nice and a very very good accuracy and stabilizer and an ap power of 60 they're fast as well now you can sometimes people choose between choppers and planes um, I tend to mix them up just for a bit of variety in the decks and a bit of variety in the gameplay. The thing about choppers is you have to resupply them, so you have to keep sending them back to a fob or back to something near the near the coast that can resupply them and then bring them back into the battle. So if you're using them a lot, they will suck your supply, and they acquire a fair amount of 
micromanagement, but they can be very, very effective, especially if you can keep them close to the ships, of your, to your own ships, which are giving them sort of air cover as well, so they can't be shot down, can be very, very effective when there are six of these guys firing 12 missiles off all at the same time. Um, 60 points as well, so not too much to bring in. Also, these all, I think most or all of the choppers have very good optics or better so they like recon they like your naval recon as well so you could even just bring one of these out have a little you know have a look around and, and see what there is in the on the seas then we've got the panthers um don't really bring these out in mainly because of this because of the range these are only can re really only be used against specific types of ship which haven't got fantastic anti-helicopter um range on their missiles because look at the range, it's only 3,850, which isn't brilliant for an anti-ship warfare missile. It has got four of them, though, and the accuracy and stabilizer are fantastic, although the AP power again lets it down a bit. And these are also 60, so when comparing it to the Super Puma, I would definitely take the Super Puma. Then we've got the Lynx Has.2. Range, again, not the best. I mean, you can't really fly these at Sovereign Menis and New Lawyers. They're just going to probably get shot down, especially if they turn their ships to fly towards your choppers. Um, so if you are if you do ever get chopped by choppers, sometimes it is a good idea to just charge your ships straight at the choppers, and then by the time the choppers have fired and had a time to turn around and get out of there, your ships might have caught them up enough to actually take some shots at them. But again, 4,200 range, action stabilizer, AP power. They're sort of similar. They're a bit cheaper than the Panthers, and uh, yeah, I mean, but again. As with all the naval decks, why bring lynxes in when you can bring pumas in? It's a no-brainer brainer as far as I'm concerned, and I think that's a problem with the balancing of these these things, really, I think. Then we've got the SH-60B ASM. This isn't too bad. I mean, it's got it's, again, it's a two-missile thing, uh, like the pumas, but the range is less than the pumas. I'll, I'll actually just compare these for you. So the range, you can see it's less than the Pumas. The Axiom Stabilizer is less than the Pumas. The AP power is the same. AT power is the same. This is the same. Pretty much everything else is the same except the optics, which are exceptional with this particular weapon. And it's got a better autonomy. So these would be perhaps a better recon type chopper. But again, these are very good optics. And it is still got 300 Ks. So you can easily go back and refuel if you want to keep it moving around. And it's just got a better weapon. So, you know, again, get the Super Puma. Now, finally, or no, not finally, but next, we're going to have a look at the anti-ship artillery pieces. If I can find them. There we are. Anti-ship artillery pieces for Blue 4. And, yeah, I think they've got three here. They've got the Exocets, which we'll compare with the one that's the same price, the MOBA. So that's the MOBA there. And, well, oh, I've just pinned that. Let's have a look at the Exocet first, actually. And then we'll compare it to the MOBA afterwards, if I can sort myself out. So this is the Exocet. Looks all right. Really, really long range, 7,000. So what people tend to do, of course, they'll hide them in the woods near the coast. And then when the ships get near the coast, they get blasted by a salvo of four AM-39 Exocet missiles with an axis of 70% and an AP power of 40 They'll take down any light ship and the heavier ships are going to get damaged as well because they've got to cope with lots of them being fired at them at the same time. Um, don't worry too much about autonomy and speed and things of like these. They're not that important. They just sit in a position and fire at ships and once they're fired, just move them to a new position. They are really, really heavy on supply. So you're going to need a lot of uh, a, a, good, a good fob nearby or like a load of choppers to resupply them and fly backwards and forwards your fob because if you use these frequently then they're going to suck your supply dry. Then we've got the MOBA and the MOBA has got the same amount of missiles as the Exocet. Um, differences, it's the same range. It, it's got slightly worse accuracy and the AP power and the HE power are the same. Reload time's the same and the rest of the stats are pretty much the similar or even the same actually so the only real difference here is the accuracy and yeah i think that's about it i think isn't it yeah sort of yeah i think so oh, i think these cost the same so i think you want to be going for the exosets there basically then we've got the buster 85 points 
This has got a slightly longer, longer range of 7,700 and six missiles. Um, the accuracy is 50%. The accuracy on the exit set is 70. So although, so again, oh sorry, let's pin the buster and bring the exit set back up. Back up. So if we look at the C buster against the exit set, the C buster's got a longer range, but to be honest, this range 7,000 is long enough. The thing that lets it down is the accuracy. The, the accuracy on the exit set is a lot better. AP power's the same, HP power's the same, reload time's the same, everything else is pretty much the same. So again, go for the exit set. It's 15 points less and it's got a much better accuracy, even though the, you lose a little bit of range, but that range is not that important. This has got six masters, this has got four. I'll go for the exit set for sure. So that's it for the uh, land-based artillery. But I just want to mention a couple of other things before we leave the marine deck for the Blue 4. And that is, don't forget about the interceptor aircraft, which it has. Which are these? I think we've briefly spoken to the, about these before. You can only get these in the marine deck. They are amazing weapons if you want to put them in your marine deck. Because look at the... Whoops, that is a Tomcat. Oh, that's right, Tomcat, yeah. Look at the range, 11,900 meters. So you can keep these right back. They are awesome weapons. It's got four of them and uh, it goes at a thousand kilometers per hour. So pretty catch up with most planes as well. And it's got a sort of intermediary missile it can fire and also a little gun as well. So they've got those if you want those. And finally, I just wanted to mention that when you see that there's like three numbers up here, one number is for the unit, one number is for its transport, and the third number is for the landing craft. Now they haven't all got landing craft. Where there are two numbers, it means they don't come in landing craft and if they're amphibious, they're going to go very slowly across the water. Whereas if they have landing craft, they will move very fast over the water and can be used for amphibious landings um, at speed, which can be very, very useful. And these amphibious landing crafts have some forms of protection as well. I think, believe they can shoot against helicopters um, and ground units. And I'm not sure about choppers. I can't quite remember, but they are very, very useful if you want to put those in your marine deck as well. So that's about it. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Please do comment, like, and subscribe if you want to have a look at some more tutorials or anything else on my channel. And I'll see you in the next one.